happy Friday. We've made it to the end of the week, which means that this is my last episode in the snack-sized series on thoughts about programming. In this closing episode, I'd like to put a few questions out there and some kernels of thought, also some notes to self about the future of programming. A question I often ask myself is, how can we program more innovatively? Often what contributes to greater innovation is more expansive research. So how can we improve our research? How can we know ourselves better as musicians so that we explore the aesthetics which immediately gratify our tastes and the ones we're more shy about and ask ourselves, why do I like this and why am I less inclined to like that? And how can I mix within one program things which capture my interest regardless of my preference of styles? What are the resources we can consult and the people who we can speak with and collaborate with so that we extend our reach of knowledge across more disciplines than we could imagine. How do we support our composer and writer colleagues who are working right now? How do we make sure that we are pro programming composers from diverse backgrounds? And most importantly of all, the, the research that we're doing enables us to find writers who we really believe in and who spark our imagination because ultimately you need to be finding material that you specifically are connecting to and in order for that material to be diverse you must be going through a lot of research to expand the possibilities for you to encounter sounds that you believe in and for you to encounter sounds that you'd love to feature and um and uh consequently find other sounds which would complement them so that they could work in the context of a program. Ultimately, and this is my note to self part as well, I think it comes down to developing a regular and consistent research practice. Often, what can get in the way of innovation in programming is the amount of time we have at our disposal to do the research that we would like to do. And to really find things which resonate with us takes a lot of digging and many hours of listening to music, reading poems, many hours of shuffling around aesthetics, speaking with colleagues, experimenting in our practice rooms. And this time is something that we can use each day. Uh, and to make sure that we develop a research practice that enables us to at the drop of a hat or if someone if a, if a presenter or anyone says can you please have a program ready for me in a week or a month we're able to consult some prior frameworks that we've made from our everyday tinkering it's important to be critical of our programming practices but also forgiving because ultimately it's quite important to be going through the drafting sketching rehearsing performing process because you get used to the act of making and finishing something. And through that, you learn even more about how you would like to handle context and proportion. And also how you would like to conduct your research differently in the future. All of this is an ongoing journey with a lot of trial and error and experimenting as we figure out every day anew what are our values and are we being true to how we're expressing them. Thank you so much for joining me on this little tour of my mind and I look forward to further refining these thoughts and sharing new discoveries as well as learning more from everyone out there, colleagues and friends who are, who are also finding ways to continue this conversation on programming. A big thank you to Young Classical Artists Trust for putting these videos together and for this platform to speak about something that I absolutely love. So let's keep searching for things that we don't know exist yet and let's cook up some more adventures in sound. Thank you. <laughs>